Welcome to Pediatrics and Neonatology. Today, I will discuss clinical approach to primary immunodeficiencies in children. Now, immune system consists of innate and adoptive immune system. And primary immunodeficiency in children usually presents with recurrent and severe bacterial infections, failure to thrive and developmental delay. Now, primary immunodeficiency is divided into four categories. Number one, antibody deficiency or B lymphocyte defect. Number two, combined deficiency that is T and B lymphocyte defect. Number three, phagocytic defect and four, complement defect. Now I will tell you about the relative frequencies of these types. Antibody deficiency is the most common type of primary immunodeficiency and it is responsible for 65% cases. Combined deficiency account for 15% cases. Phagocytic defect responsible for 10% and complement disorders are responsible for 5% cases. Now, cellular deficiency, T cell deficiency is responsible for 5% cases. Now, in order to diagnose the specific category of primary immunodeficiency, following steps should be followed. Primary immunodeficiency causes children and young adults to have infections, which come back frequently and are usually hard to cure. So the first step to suspect the possible presence of an underlying primary immunodeficiency is to look for two or more of the following 10 warning signs. Number one, eight or more new ear infection in one year. Number two, two or more serious sinus infection within one year. Three, two or more months on antibiotics with little effect. Number four, two or more pneumonia within one year. And five, failure of an infant to gain weight or grow normally. Recurrent deep skin or organ abscesses, persistent thrush in mouth or elsewhere on the skin after age one year. Number eight, need for intravenous antibiotics to clear infections. Number nine, two or more deep seated infections. And number ten, family history of primary immunodeficiency. Now, second step is to rule out other conditions that increase susceptibility to infection. This can easily be achieved if you have taken a good history and have done complete physical examination. So, rule out allergic rhinitis, asthma, cystic fibrosis, foreign body aspiration, conditions which impaired skin barrier functions, malnutrition and drugs such as chemotherapy, immunosuppressive medications, glucocorticoids, disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs such as rituximab. Protein loss via gastroenteropathy or kidney disease, bone marrow and blood cells malignancy, AIDS and if a single site is involved, then anatomic defects and foreign body should also be ruled out. Now, so after excluding other conditions responsible for decreased immunity, we have come to a conclusion that the child is having some kind of primary immunodeficiency. Now, categorize the patient as antibody deficiency, combined deficiency, phagocytic defect or complement defects. Now there are clues to categorize the patient. These are four. First is age at onset of infection, type of infections, location of infection and associated findings. Now first is the age at onset of infection. Combined deficiency has early onset, usually before six months of age. Similarly, phagocytic defects also present early. Now, antibody deficiency onset is after 3 to 6 months of age when the maternal antibodies decline. But some antibody deficiency may present later in the childhood or adult age. Now, complement deficiency can present at any age. Second clue is the type of infection or a specific pathogen. In combined deficiency, bacterial, viral, fungal, and protozoal infections are common. Bacterial infections include Streptococcus pneumoniae, Campylobacter fetus, Staphylococcus aureus, Haemophilus influenzae, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Mycoplasma hominis, Urea plasma, Urea lyticum, Listeria monocytogens, Salmonella, Enteric flora, Atypical mycobacteria, and BCG. Viral infections include Cytomegalovirus, Epstein Barr virus. Varicella, respiratory syncytial virus, enterovirus, and rotavirus. Now, the common fungal and protozoal infection in combined deficiency include Candida albicans, Aspergillus fumigatus, Toxoplasma gondii, Pneumocystis carini, and Cryptosporidium. Next is the antibody deficiency. In these, more common are the bacterial infection, but viruses and fungi protozoa infection also occur. Bacterial infections include Streptococcus pneumoniae. 
Campylobacter fetus hemophilus influenzae, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, urea plasma urea lyticum, Staphylococcus aureus and mycoplasma hominis. Enteroviruses and giardia lamblia also cause infection. Now, in phagocytic defects, bacterial and fungal protozoal infections are common, but viral infections are uncommon. Bacterial infections include Staphylococcus aureus, enteric flora, Burkholderia, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Salmonella, Seracea, Nocardia steroids, Klebsiella, non tuberculous mycobacteria, and BCG. And fungal protozoal infections include Candida albicans and Aspergillus fumigatus. Now, in complement effect, bacterial infections are common. These include Neisseria meningitis, Neisseria gonorrhoeae, Streptococcus pneumonia, Staphylococcus aureus, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and H. influenzae. Viruses, fungi, and protozoal infections are uncommon in complement effects. Now, third clue is the location of infection or affected organs. In combined deficiency, there is failure to thrive and severe infections such as meningitis, septicemia, and sinopulmonary infections. Recurrent candidiasis and protective diarrhea also occur in combined deficiency. In antibody deficiency, infections such as recurrent sinopulmonary infections, pneumonia, meningitis are more common. There is also chronic malabsorption, inflammatory bowel disease like symptoms, and arthritis. Next is phagocytic defects in this skin infection such as dermatitis, abscesses, and cellulitis is common. There is also separative lymph adenitis and oral cavity infections such as periodontitis and ulcers. In complement defects, infections such as meningitis, disseminated conococcal infections, septicemia, and pneumonia are common. Now, the fourth clue is to look for associated findings or special features. Now, in combined deficiency, associated findings include graft versus host disease from maternal T cell or blood product transfusion, disseminated infection after BCG or live polio immunization, absent lymphoid tissue, and absent thymic shadow on chest X ray. Next is antibody deficiency. Associated findings include autoimmunity. Lymphoreticular malignancies, post vaccination polio or BCG infection, chronic enteroviral encephalitis. In phagocytic defect, associated findings are poor wound healing, pyloric stenosis, urethral stenosis, and inflammatory bowel disease. Now, in complement defect, associated findings include autoimmune disorders such as SLE, vasculitis, dermatomyositis, scleroderma, glomerulonephritis. Hereditary angioedema and atypical hemolytic uremic syndrome is also present. Now, fourth step is to categorize the patient and order primary screening laboratory test. Initial laboratory evaluation in antibody defect is quantitative immunoglobulins level, IgG, IgM, IgA, and IgE levels. Now, very low concentration of all immunoglobulins are present in antibody defect. Now, next is initial laboratory evaluation in combined T and B lymphocyte defect. This includes complete blood cell count with differentials. Absolute lymphocyte count is decreased less than 1000 per microliter in this case. And along with this, HIV testing should also be done. Now, next is initial laboratory evaluation in phagocyte disorders. These include WBC count with differentials. And there is usually neutropenia. But there is neutrophilia and leukocyte addition defects and chronic granulomatous diseases. Now, next is initial laboratory evaluation in complement deficiency and total hemolytic complement activity with CH50 assay is usually low in these cases. Now, this is the fifth step. After the initial screening evaluation and diagnosis of a specific category of the primary immunodeficiency, patient should be referred to immunology specialist. Now, at this stage, secondary and advanced laboratory evaluation should be done to further screen for the subtypes of each major category of primary immunodeficiency. Now, the secondary evaluation for antibody deficiency include complete blood cell count with differentials. These include D and B lymphocyte count, B lymphocyte enumeration panel, which detect CD19 plus and 20 plus B cells. B lymphocyte may be low or absent in X-linked proton A gamma globulinemia. Serum albumin level should also be checked because it may be deficient if there is protein loss via gut or kidney. 
then isohemagglutinin titers are also low in antibody deficiency there is also low specific igg antibody response to prior or repeat immunization now advanced evaluation for antibody deficiency include dna analysis for specific genetic mutation and also screen for memory b cells now secondary evaluation for combined t and b lymphocyte defect include t and b lymphocyte and natural killer cell enumeration which detect specific cd particles other tests include lymphocyte proliferation assay to mitogens and antigens and delayed type hypersensitivity skin test now next is advanced evaluation for combined t and b lymphocyte defect these include dna analysis for specific genetic mutation and red cell adenosine dmiinase and purine nucleoside phosphorylase level cytotoxic studies should also be done in this combined deficiency now secondary evaluation in case of phagocytic defects include dihydrorhodamine flow cytometry assay and nitroblue tetrazoleum reduction assay while advanced evaluation include bacterial assays cd11 cd18 analysis and chemotaxis assay okay thanks for watching please like share comment and subscribe to the channel